Hello, this is Mighty Owl. What if I told you that cell phones are the descendants of smoke signals? Wait, what? I know, it sounds a bit crazy, but let me tell you this. Some of the mightiest minds of all time sounded a bit crazy when they were first presenting their brilliant ideas. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of a mighty mind just like that. Charles Darwin. He's the father of the famous evolution theory. The theory that turned the world of science upside down. The one that says all species are related and gradually change and adapt over time. Oh, I can't wait to dive in. Oh, but first things first, who is this genius, Charles Darwin? His story started back in the winter of 1809 in England, when Charles was born into the wealthy family of a famous medical doctor. His dad expected his son to follow in his footsteps in the medical career. And so Darwin entered one of the top medical schools. But he soon got bored and he realized he couldn't stand the sight of blood. So medicine was eventually off the table. His dad insisted on another respected career path for Charles, that of an Anglican country parson. So Darwin enrolled in Christ's College in Cambridge to study religion. There he became friends with others who were very interested in nature, science, and different species. At that time, it was quite popular among students to collect beetles or butterflies. And so, guess who joined the competition with the greatest enthusiasm? Charles, of course. That was his ever-existing passion. From a little boy, he loved being in the garden, exploring different bugs, plants, and other living things. In college, he finally found people who shared that interest and encouraged him to become even more curious and even adventurous about his observations and discoveries. So when he received an invitation for a research trip around the world, there was no hesitation at all. Young Darwin, only at 22 years old, became part of the crew on a ship named HMS Beagle. The ship started its voyage from Britain and sailed around South America, Australia, and Africa on its way back to Britain to map the continent's coastal line. And Darwin explored and collected hundreds of species of plants, animals, and fossils. That trip lasted five years, and these five years were probably the most important ones in Darwin's life. He was free to explore the world. And when I say explore, don't imagine Darwin was taking photos or selfies with everything he saw. There wasn't any technology like that back then. No, Darwin instead filled hundreds of pages with careful observations and hand-drawn pictures. One of his most famous observations was on the Galapagos Islands. He observed a small bird, a kind of finch. Now on each island, that bird had a different beak, depending on the type of food it ate. On the first island, the little finches had a strong beak for cracking up seeds and nuts. On the second one, the finches had neat pointy beaks for picking up tiny bugs. The third type had long thin beaks for digging up worms, and the fourth type had large beaks fit for the flowers that they were eating. Darwin also observed the tortoises around the islands. In the humid areas where there were a lot of plants, the turtles had short necks and dome-shaped shells, while in the drier areas, they had longer necks and saddle-shaped shells. Now, where do those differences come from? Well, evolution. Over time, the tortoises in the drier areas developed long necks in order for them to reach the bushes for certain types of food, while the tortoises in the humid areas could easily eat grass with their short necks and protect themselves from predators due to their dome-shaped shells. In 1839, Darwin published his diary of the trip aboard the Beagle. Twenty years later, in 1859, he published his ideas and observations in a book called On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. Woo! Quite a long time that was. Now, according to Darwin's evolution theory, also known as Darwinism, all living things have a common ancestor and they are struggling to survive. Of course, individuals in the population differ. And the ones with the most useful characteristics for their environment 
have the best chance for survival. Those individuals then pass along their useful traits to their children. In this way, the new generation will be better equipped for survival than the older one. That's why animals and plants change over hundreds of years. They're actually adapting. That's why Darwin said it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. The one that survives is the most adaptable to change. What a mighty thought, right? Now, as you may have guessed, not everyone agreed with his theory. It was quite new and progressive for its time. Even nowadays, there are people who support it and people who think everything started in a completely different way. Darwin, however, will remain one of the greatest scientists of all time. He did not simply suggest how the plants and animals changed over the years. He explained why it happened scientifically. The boy whose passion was to explore beetles and bugs devoted all his life to research and writing scientific observations. And when he died in 1882, he was buried in the famous Westminster Abbey as a national hero. Woo! What an inspiring story. But do you remember how it all started? Cell phones and smoke signals, right? Well, that is also evolution. Evolution of long-distance communication and technology. And it took a couple hundred of years to happen, but now it's here in our pockets. Told you it's not such a crazy idea after all. For more crazy, inspiring, and mighty stories, join me in the next video lesson.